this lecture we will talk about droplet microfluidics. Droplet microfluidics deals with how we can generate uh, droplets of let's say one fluid which is immiscible in an another fluid in a microfluidic device. Now the key idea over here is that let's say we have two liquids let's say first liquid and second liquid that are flowing uh, alongside each other and we can uh, make a microfluidic device which allows us to do this. Now these two fluids are immiscible and let's for the moment say that there is no surface tension that is gamma is equal to zero. So if there is no surface tension then these two fluids will simply flow parallel to each other. But we know that uh, every interface has an associated surface tension. So what happens in uh, such kind of flows is that this uh, uh, flat interface between two co-flowing uh, liquid streams which are immiscible with each other breaks up and it leads to formation of certain droplets. Now, uh, what we'll say is that the liquid which forms the droplet is called the dispersed phase whereas the liquid that is outside is called the continuous phase. So uh, one uh, example where we have uh, this so called emulsion which is just collection of dispersed phase in continuous phase is milk for example where we have water as the continuous phase and fat as the dispersed phase. So typically emulsions are generated uh, by uh, generating droplets uh, of uh, dispersed phase by either shear or impact. So what you can do is that you can let's say take water and oil and then stir it uh, vigorously and you will apply a shear to get such kind of an emulsion. However, the conventional processes to generate emulsions <coughs> lead to a wide range of uh, droplet sizes and that is called poly dispersity. So there is a wide range of sizes of droplets that you would get because you are not uh, precisely controlling the droplet formation process. But in microfluidic devices we can generate mono disperse drops okay and once you have mono dispersed drops you can use such kind of a microfluidic device to do different things for example if you have these drops you can polymerize these drops to make polymeric beads okay so you can generate large number of drops of equal sizes and every drop uh, if we can control the concentration or control the chemical composition of uh, species inside this we can use each of these drop as a reaction chamber. So you can think of doing an experiment in few test tubes but if you can do this experiment in a droplet you can do millions of experiments in parallel. So you can have large number of reactions, massively parallel reactions. You can also use it for uh, techniques such as digital PCR. But anyways, the 
applications of uh, mono disperse droplets are immense but here we'll discuss how we can use a microfluidic device to generate these droplets so what we are going to look at is a very simple device okay which uh, is based on two streams that are flowing uh, along with each other so this is called a co-flow device so the idea is that if we have uh, one stream let's say of uh, water which is flowing uh, within uh, a stream or uh, we have a f water which is flowing uh, surrounded by an oil and stream that is also flowing then we will have formation of droplets so what we'll do is that we'll make a device so uh, a simple co-flow device can be made as follows so we start with a circular capillary like the one shown over here and we can create a taper in this capillary so what, how we can do it is that we can heat this end of capillary and pull it and that would lead to this kind of a taper and taper would allow us to get even small tip sizes even though the the size of the capillary is not that small so you can uh, get and these tip sizes of order tens of micrometers now uh, that uh, capillary with a tapered capillary is now inserted in a square capillary with exactly same size as the outer diameter of this capillary so if we do that then these two capillaries are aligned so we can flow the outer liquid which is the continuous phase uh, in the square capillary and the dispersed phase in the uh, circular capillary and when we do that we'll have formation of uh, droplets so uh, the behavior of droplet formation can be characterized in such devices by two dimensionless numbers so we are interested in seeing how we can control the droplet size in a microfluidic device so there are two dimensionless numbers that are important the first dimensionless number is called the capillary number So the capillary number is the ratio of viscous shear force to surface tension force. So it is different find as the dynamic viscosity times velocity over the surface tension so uh, this is the capillary number so because we have uh, some uh, viscous shear in this uh, flow along with surface tension the competition is given by the capillary number another number that is dimensionless number that is important is called the Weber number so in some cases we'll see that the phenomena is described by the competition of inertia force by surface tension force in that cases we'll use the Weber number which is the ratio of inertia by surface tension and it is defined as rho that is density times square root of velocity times some characteristic length scale over the uh, over the surface tension and uh, you can see that uh, so we'll define call this as ca and this as we it's uh, easy to see that we over ca is simply rho u d over eta and that is the Reynolds number so if you control capillary number and Reynolds number you will get Weber number or um, otherwise so you can control two of these and 
the other one will be other dimensional parameter will be controlled. So in our system, in this co-flowing system, we will see that the capillary number of outer fluid and the Weber number of inner fluid are sufficient to describe this system. So the droplet uh, generation behavior can be classified for this uh, system in two uh, particular regimes and the first regime is called the dripping regime and the second regime is called jetting. So uh, in this lecture we'll just focus on the dripping regime and we'll go to the jetting regime in the next lecture. So dripping regime if we focus on this occurs at at low flow rates of both liquids. So if the flow rate of both of these liquids is small, what we see is that so uh, this is an experimental uh, data. So what we see is that the drop so in of this fluid that is coming from the capillary uh, that is the inner fluid it grows at the tip of the capillary and uh, it keeps on growing and after some time it pinches off from this tip and moves downstream. So the droplet breakup process takes place at the tip of the capillary. So this uh, process actually uh, is analogous to what we see if we reduce the flow rate in a tap or a water faucet. So let's say if we have the tip of a tap of water and we reduce the flow rate, what we would see is that initially the drop will stick to this tip and in this particular case we also have gravity so the drop will continue growing like this but at one point what will happen is that as the drop size increases the gravity the force due to gravity uh, is uh, becomes more than the force that is holding this uh, drop and that is the surface tension force and then there is a pinch off of this drop and that is what we see in our daily life. But in this case, in our co-flowing uh, system, microfluidic system, uh, the gravity has no effect because we have already seen that for microfluidic systems with dimensions smaller than the capillary length scale, uh, gravity has no effect. So why this droplet is breaking is because so uh, it's uh, because the shear force uh, or the viscous drag that is exerted by the outer fluid or the continuous phase. So what's uh, happening is that uh, initially the droplet size is small and in that case the surface tension dominates and the surface tension force scales as gamma times d tip. So this diameter is d tip. Now uh, as this drop grows the diameter of this uh, droplet increases and the surface uh, or the viscous drag that is exerted by the stream that is flowing uh, outside and that drag scales as eta of the outside fluid that is the dynamic viscosity times u 
which is the speed of the outer fluid times the diameter of the drop. So at uh, one point when these two forces the surface tension force and the drag force they are comparable uh, in magnitude that is the point where we have this uh, droplet breakup because a drop which is bigger than the size at break up will have higher uh, will undergo a higher uh, viscous drag and therefore it will not be able to attach at the tip so what we see from here is that the the drop it uh, scales the drop diameter scales as d tip times gamma over eta of outer fluid and speed of the outer fluid and if you look at this term carefully this particular term this is 1 over the capillary number for the outer fluid so that means that if we uh, change the capillary number we can actually control the drop size so the drop diameter in this dripping regime decreases with the capillary number and this uh, dependence of the drop size with capillary number has actually been observed experimentally so uh, one thing to note over here is that in the dripping regime the drop size does not depend upon the flow rate of the inner uh, inner fluid okay so because from this relation we see that only the flow rate or the velocity of the outer fluid uh, is mattering because it is shearing this droplet away from this tip but the flow rate ratio so let's say you have q in over q out which is the ratio of flow rate of inner fluid to outer fluid as it increases it's not changing the drop size but uh, it will certainly change the drop generation frequency because for the same droplet size if you are applying a higher inlet flow rate then uh, that would mean that the frequency of the droplet generation should increase so uh, all these scalings for the dripping regime have been uh, validated experimentally so in the next uh, le lecture we'll uh, discuss this jetting regime